Hey, welcome back to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to use the cross-platform native plugins 2 inside Unity. For this lesson, we'll be going over the notification service. Now, if you haven't already, please check out Voxel Busters, who are the official sponsors of this tutorial series and the developers of the cross-platform native plugin. I've left links to their content in the description below. In the overview section for the notification service, it lists five different functionalities that the service provides, and they are local and remote notifications, setting a repeat interval, location triggers, which is only available on iOS, customized payload keys on Android, and editor simulation. Notifications are a good thing to implement into your games because it helps with retention and playtime. If you can remind your audience to keep playing your game, especially if there's a benefit involved, then you'll have more concurrent users at any given time. In the use cases section of the documentation, it talks about three different principles. The first is schedule timely notifications. This is how it is in many popular games that have wait times where they require the player to return after something is finished building, training, researching, or leveling up. The second principle is promotions. This can be related to an in-app store. Whenever you have special sales going on, you can push a notification to inform your audience of that sale. And the third principle is to increase retention, which I've already touched on. In the setup section of the documentation, it shows that we need to enable the notification services in our Essential Kit settings. So inside Unity, I'll open up the Essential Kit settings, and then I'll toggle on the notification services. I'll then expand the notification services. Here you can see that there's several options that can be modified. Now you can cursor over each of these settings to get a bit more information of what the setting is for, or you can read about all these settings in the setup section of the documentation. The main options that we'll look at are the presentation options, which is a drop down menu where you can select which elements of the notification display you want to be visible. We'll then leave the push notification service type as custom. And then we have the Android properties, which allows you to change some of the aesthetics of how your notification will appear on an Android device. These small icon options are for how your app's notifications will appear in the notification bar at the top of a device. And there's two options because one is for devices before Lollipop and the other is for devices after. We can then enable the allow notification display when foreground. This will make it so that even when the game is currently open, the player will still get a notification. And finally, we have the payload keys, which for the most part, we don't need to touch unless the keys are already different on our back end. In the iOS section for setup, it tells us that the plugin uses APNS or Apple Push Notification Service for registering to notifications and this service is provided by Apple for free. It also tells us that there's no special setup that we need to do, as this plugin is already configured automatically. In the Android section for setup, it tells us that the plugin uses FCM, or Firebase Cloud Messaging, for registering to push notifications. And there is a bit of setup that we need to do for this. And so the first thing that we'll do is click on the Firebase link in the documentation. Here we'll need to log in and then go to our console. You'll then need to click on your project, but if you don't have one, then you can create a new project. And here you should be able to see a list of the projects that we've created in our Google console. And so I'll select the project that I'm working on. And then we need to accept the Firebase terms and click continue. We can also click continue here. Here it's asking us to enable analytics for our project. So I'll leave that selected and click continue. We then need to click these checkboxes to accept more terms of service, after which we can click add Firebase. Once you're on your project's dashboard, you'll want to click this gear icon next to the project overview, and we'll select project settings. Then under the generals tab, we'll go down to the your app section, and we'll select the unity icon to add an app in our project. We then need to fill out this form to register our app. Once you're at this point and you've registered your app, you can click on the download Google services.json button. You then just want to save this file in the assets folder of your project, after which we'll complete the setup for our Unity app. Now in the usage section of the documentation, it shows us how to code for local notifications, as well as push notifications or remote notifications. Now for the most part, we can do most of the heavy lifting with local notifications, 
whereas push notifications once again are for special circumstances where rather than the game it's more or less you as the developer who's notifying the player of something that's more external than what can be handled with local notifications inside your game. Now first things first we need to create a new script within our Unity project for the notification service. So here inside Unity, I've created a new script, which I've called IG underscore notifications. And once you have this script created, we'll open it up. Now, the first thing that we need to do is include the using voxelbuster.essentialkit namespace up at the top, after which we can create three new variables. The first is another singleton, but of this script. So this is a public static variable of type IG underscore notifications, which is the same as this class. And I've called this variable instance. We then need a variable of type notification settings, which I've called settings, and we need a bool called is registered. Once we have these variables created, the next thing that we want to do is initialize our singleton. And so in the start function, I have instance equals this. Now in the documentation, the next thing it says that we need to do is request permission from the user to use notifications. But before we do this, I want to get the permissions. And so I'll copy this segment of code under get settings. And here I've pasted that code into the start function. Now at this point, you might be receiving an error for notification services. We can see that it's telling us that this term is ambiguous between voxelbusters.essentialkit and Unity Engine. To fix this error, we can either delete the Unity Engine namespace from the top, or we can just add the voxelbuster.essentialkit namespace before notification services. And I'll do this for every time you see notification services in this script. You can then remove the data type of this settings variable because we've added this variable up at the top. Now from here, we can create a public function for setting up local notifications. And so here I have a public void function, which I've called create local notification. For the parameters of this function, we have a string, which I've called notification ID, another string called notification title, a double called time, and a bool called can repeat. Then inside this function, I have an if statement where I'm checking our settings variable dot permission status, and I'm seeing if it's equal to notification permission status dot not determined. If this equals not determined, it means our player has yet to accept or decline our permission request. And so we can copy this segment of code under request access and paste it into our if statement. Now in the documentation, it gives us a note that if the player did not grant us those permissions, we can then open the application settings where they can turn notifications on. And so inside our script, I have another if statement where I'm checking to see if settings.permission status equals notification permission status dot denied. Then inside this if statement, we could either return, which would make it so that our notifications just don't get created, or we could call utilities.open application settings. I've then created another if statement for if the player has granted us those permissions. And this if statement is settings.permission status equals notification permission status dot authorized. Now the next thing we have in the documentation is for creating local notifications. To do this, we first need to create an instance of inotification. And so we'll copy this segment of code and I've pasted it into my last if statement. I've then changed the string parameter for the create notification function to be our first parameter, which is notification ID. I then changed the string parameter for the set title function to be our second parameter, which is notification title. The documentation then explains how we can add in a time interval and a repeat condition. This is done by adding in dot set time interval notification trigger and passing in our third parameter, which is time. You then need a comma and then repeats with a colon and our fourth parameter, which is can repeat. Next up in the documentation, it talks about scheduling a notification, and that's done with this segment of code. So we'll copy it and go back to our script. And here I've pasted in that code right after we create the instance of inotification. Now, as you can see, for the scheduled notification function, we're passing in the notification variable, which is our inotification. Now, as for using this create local notification function, I've added this example code, which you can call from anywhere in your scripts because it uses the IG notification singleton. And so let's say, for example, you had a game with little gold mines that allowed the player to collect an in-game currency, but the gold mines only held a limited amount, and so the players would want to empty the gold mines once they're full so that they can continue collecting more gold. Well, in this example, you would want to create a notification when the player empties the gold mine. That way, they can be notified once it's full. And so you would call this line of code at that point in your game. And this line of code is ig underscore notifications dot instance, which is our singleton, 
create local notification. For the first parameter, we would pass in a string, something like goldmine full. For the second parameter, we pass in the message that we want the player to receive. And so I just put your gold mines are full. For the third parameter, I just put in the time for an hour in seconds. But if you knew the exact time for a gold mine to be filled, you would want to put that time here instead. And then I just put false for this notification because we'll create it again once the player empties the gold mine. And that pretty much handles all the code that we need for creating and scheduling local notifications. Now the documentation does include more information on getting scheduled notifications, canceling scheduled notifications, getting delivered notifications, and removing delivered notifications. Now the next part of the documentation is for push or remote notifications, and there's five principles that we need to talk about for push notifications. The first principle is that we need to have our game registered and listening for push notifications. You can think of this like when you have your scripts listening for action events. If your project isn't registered for push notifications, then when those notifications are sent, nothing will happen on your end. Now when you register for push notifications, you'll receive a token, and this token is known as a device token or registration token. This token is also sent to your backend server, at which point your backend server creates the message payload. You can think of this payload as all of the information that will be sent with the remote notification. There's then a request given to the APNS and FCM notification services, which includes the message payload and the device token. These two notification services then target the user's device using the device token to send the message payload. And finally, the device should receive and display the notification. Now getting into the code for push notifications, to receive the device token, we first need to register to push notifications. And we do this with this segment of code here. So we'll copy this code, go back to our script. Inside our script, below the create local notification function, I've created an unenable function. I've then pasted in the code here. Inside the documentation, it then tells us that we can check to see if we are registered to push notifications. And we do that with this line of code here. So we can copy this, and I've pasted in at the bottom of our unenable function. I've then deleted the bool type of our isRegistered variable, because I've added this variable to the top of our script. The documentation then tells us that we can unregister to push notifications once we're done with them. And so we'll copy this code, and here I've created an onDisable function, and inside this function, I'm first checking to see if we are registered. So I have if is registered, and if we are, then we can paste in the line of code. Now the last thing the documentation tells us is that if the user has disabled push notifications, then we can just go ahead and unregister to them, and this will save on our device's battery life. And so inside the script, we can scroll up to the start function, and at the bottom of this function, I've added in an if statement, where I'm checking to see if settings.pushNotificationEnabled equals false. If it does, we can then paste in that same line of code and set isRegistered equal to false. Now once you have all this, you can save the script and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, all we need to do is create an empty game object, which I've called Notification Manager. We can then drag on our script and we'll want to create a prefab out of this object. Then, wherever you want to create a local notification for your game, you would want to first make sure that this prefab is in that scene, and then you'll be able to access the script attached to this object through the singleton variable and call the create local notification function as we've already covered in this example code. As for push notifications, I'm not going to go through how to create them through APNS and FCM, but it should be pretty easy to find documentation and tutorials on how to use both of those systems. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to use the notification service. If you enjoyed this lesson, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.